Hi, Sheila. Can Hello. you tell us about yourself? Yes, I was born and raised right here in Scarborough Rouge River. I went to the local schools. I'm president of my community association in Agent Court, and I've been very active in the community as a volunteer. I also have 20 years of municipal and provincial experience, uh, first as a senior advisor to Mayor Mel Lastman in the city of North York for 13 years, and following another seven years in a very senior capacity, working alongside NDP leader Howard Hampton and the NDP at Queen's Park. So I'm the only candidate with provincial political experience, plus I have a whole uh, host of programs and uh, special facilities that I've developed uh, as someone who's worked with the community uh, in many, many areas. So you say that your background is like helping at the back, now you're coming up front. What makes you like make that decision? I've been at Queen's Park for seven years, and in all that time I've never heard anyone speaking out for Scarborough, really and passionately advancing the issues that are important to Scarborough, and being a voice for the members of all our uh, you know, diverse communities who live here. So I am in it because there is a vacant seat now, and it's a by-election when we have a chance to choose one person we best believe will represent the community and be able to work with all members of our community to get results from the top. So uh, everybody knows that like provincial or federal are party politics, all right? So you are, say you are representing NDP to run for, for the by-election. Yes, I'm so, very proud to be the NDP candidate yeah, in this by-election. Can you tell us, audience, why, why, we have to, why the constituents have to choose NDP instead of like liberal or conservative? Well, we have a liberal government now. We have a majority liberal government. And I think people understand that in a majority government, it's very important to have a strong opposition to stand up to the government when it doesn't deliver. And this is the case with Dalton McGinty and the Liberals. They've been the government for two years, and they made all kinds of promises that we saw them break. And so they've broken promises about hiring more police officers, and they've broken promises about delivering quality public health care and improving service uh, in all the areas of health care. And they haven't provided the leadership and the jobs and opportunities for our youth in this community, which is very important because we have more youth here than in anywhere else in Toronto. So I can be that voice that's not with the government but fighting the government to deliver on its promises. And that's something that my Liberal opponent cannot do. My Liberal opponent will be going to uh, just be a voice of the government and would not be able to be effective in fighting the government. So the last thing we need at Queen's Park right now is another Liberal. We already have them as the government. What we need right now is a strong voice that's independent of the government and extremely capable of getting results by working with people at the grassroots and then getting those results for Scarborough at the top. So in terms of like the major free contenders in this area, like the one from Liberal or the other one from Conservative, why you? Why people have to choose you instead of the other two? Well, I have the most years experience. I'm the only one with Queen's Park experience, and I've lived here all my life, so I know Scarborough, I know the people and its needs. Uh, the Conservative candidate doesn't live here, and the Liberal candidate is just another Liberal backbencher who will not have a strong voice at Queen's Park and will not be able to stand up to Dalton McGuinty and his broken promises. We need someone who's going to shed light on this and really actively fight for our community, who's not bridled by the partisan activities of the Liberal government and is not bound to defend them when they've so clearly broken so many promises in all the areas that are important to Scarborough. That would be education and the cost of tuition. It would be the price of gas. Uh, they've done nothing to uh, make that more affordable. It also has to do with the care of our seniors and, and health care in general, where they've collected a new health tax from us, but they have not delivered improved services. So I'm the voice. I'm the only voice with the skills, the experience, the background, and the real talent for communicating the needs of Scarborough at Queen's Park. Yeah. So in this writing, the Scarborough Hose River, so what are the key issues for the constituents to concern about it? Number one, I think overall, is community safety. And by that I mean a quality of life for Scarborough that only comes with attention being paid to our city. 
We have so many Liberal members at Queen's Park now, and not one of them is speaking out on these important issues of uh, hiring more police. The Liberals promised us 1,000 new officers, and they've only delivered a fraction. So we need me in there to remind them of that promise and to remind them that Scarborough expects more and deserves better. Uh, there are other key issues that have to do with uh, solving crime and reducing crime and bringing in good crime prevention programs, and that has to do with finding activities and providing opportunities for our youth. The NDP has a program, it's called the Building Hope Document, which we developed with uh, many communities three years ago and have advanced as part of our election platform. And it has to do with the youth in this area having a center, first of all, where they can go, and also having access to skills training, uh, professional guidance, mentorship programs, and uh, recreational opportunities that keep them busy and keep them off the streets. So the combination of both these things, more police officers, all we need to do is uh, tell Dalton McGinty we expect better and get him to deliver on those uh, police officers. And then we need to get the investment in the community development part of it, the programs and services for our youth. And this morning we know that there's quite a diverse of like minorities, like uh, people from South Asia, China. So how, you, how are you going to appeal them? How, what kind of support are you getting from those communities? I'm getting overwhelming support from the diverse communities of Scarborough, and this is one of the things I love about our city, uh, and I've said that uh, many occasions that we have the world at our doorstep, and what we need is a strong voice from Scarborough to start uh, promoting the positive that we have here, all the wonderful businesses that have come and all the new uh, products we see on the shelves that are keeping our economy moving, all the small businesses, all the mom and pop enterprises that have come to Scarborough and are making our economy uh, move. So I, I applaud diversity and I've worked a great deal of my life on anti-racism, on programs to fight discrimination and on community programs that involve these diverse communities and really make the best of our multicultural fabric. I've uh, been working with youth in my own community on a litter prevention program. I am on a board that raises money for scholarships from youth from various communities, such as the Vietnamese community and uh, the Somaliland community and many, many others. As well, I um, was the first person to develop an employment program for youth that involved high school students from minority communities being matched with companies in management trainee positions. And uh, that was very successful. We placed many students who went on to find jobs with those companies. And that's part of what we need for Scarborough, the employment opportunities that are meaningful and that uh, will give uh, our young people a real shot at a good life. As well, we need to pay attention to tuition and what's happening in post-secondary education because Dalton McGinty, who promised to make post-secondary education more affordable for our young people, has in fact reversed himself and is now increasing tuition so it's even more costly. And as well, in the deregulated professions such as law and medicine, he's made no move to re-regulate those tuitions and bring the cost down so that any child can get the highest education without having to worry about how much money their parents have in the bank. That Education needs to be accessible for all, and this is one of the NDP's key policy platforms, is to lower the cost of tuition, and ultimately, we believe that post-secondary education should be freely available to all students. So, uh, in terms of like diverse communities, what kind of, like, for your campaign team, does it represent different members of different committees? Or? Uh, we are getting wide-ranging support from our, our Chinese community, from our uh, uh, Tamil community. We have members of the Muslim community very, very active in this campaign. Uh, I could go on and list every single group. There's more than 50 uh, different ethnocultural groups represented in Scarborough and far many more languages spoken. So we've produced our materials in the Mandarin and Cantonese dialects. We have produced it in Urdu and in Tamil so that we can reach out. That's what this election is all about, is all of us coming together and really standing up and demanding that Dalton McGinty do better for Scarborough. And there's only one voice that is capable of delivering that message and capable of getting the attention of the government, and that's the New Democratic Party. Uh, the NDP is famous in history for such wonderful things as Medicare. We invented Medicare. 
uh, we are responsible for the fact that older people have pensions when they retire. And also, we are the party that demanded and got the right for visible minorities to vote in this country. So we come from a very proud heritage of being able to reach out. We believe that the Ontario Anti-Racism Secretariat should be reinstated. This was an agency that was created by the NDP in government and was dismantled by the Conservatives. But it was a necessary component if we're serious about bridging the gap for our multicultural communities, giving them the resources they need to uh, start doing all those programs that, uh, that they can do with uh, just a little bit of help. As well, uh, we need to make sure that we invest in those communities so that they're strong and stable. Yeah. And we know that the, the Ontario NDP under the leadership of Howard Hampton, it seems that there's not much progress for the past few years. And then it's, uh, it's sometimes you almost lose the official party status. But um, if you win it, we'll be able to like work with the leader closely and then develop the party? Well, first of all, we've had tremendous success recently in, in Hamilton East in a by-election one year ago, overwhelmingly the people there elected a new Democrat by 63 percent, uh, the new Democrat Andrea Horvath. And uh, as well, in the last election, our voter percentage, our popular support, went up by 3 percent. It's only because we don't have a fair voting system in this uh, province that the NDP lost uh, seats even though it gained public support. So we need to bring in something that we call PR, proportional representation, which means that every vote counts. And that way, the NDP would have had a great deal more seats. We would have had at least 14 seats instead of the seven that we ended up with. This is a good way for the public to ensure now that the NDP does have official party status because it's very important. We've uh, made some great gains in, in drawing attention to serious problems such as the Kasha uh water problems that you saw recently affecting First Nations. That was the NDP that brought that to light and insisted that those communities receive help. As well, we've spoken out for the children with special needs who weren't getting the, the care from this government, and the children with autism who, again, were abandoned by this government. And we also speak out for low-income people and working people who just want life to be affordable and to have a better quality of life. And that's what the NDP is known for. So this vote is its like insurance. It's like having public insurance because you'll put the NDP there and you'll ensure that they have the official party status that enables us to help the working families of Ontario. We know that in, like, in greater Toronto area, certain area ridings like Chinatown, Beach area, they are the experiences held by the NDP candidates. Right? When we look at the Scarborough Hoose River, so it seems that it's a, long, it's a place where Liberal holds it for a long time. So do you think that NDP can take over this, this riding as the, the NDP? Oh, place? absolutely. This, this riding is winnable for the NDP. And I'll tell you why. Because it was represented by Alvin Curling for 20 years. And this was Alvin's riding. People voted for Alvin. Uh, now, in 20 years, our community has grown and changed and it's involving all many new communities which we welcome. But it is not the same Scarborough Rouge River as it was 20 years ago. And there are many new voices uh, with very serious issues who want to be heard and want to choose the representative who's going to best speak for them. And that's why the NDP is getting such warm support from the doors, because people realize that their best uh, tool for sending a message is to elect a new Democrat to tell the Liberals to do better. So all of the three most contenders, like you, uh, the one from Conservative and also from Liberal, what are your chances, you guess? I think my chances are very good. We're running a competitive campaign. The more people see me and get to know me, uh, the, the word of mouth is very good. Uh, people are recommending me. They're coming in to my campaign office to volunteer and, and put their hearts into this campaign because they know that I'm the best candidate and they believe in me. Now, I'm thankful for that. And now what I need is for people to see this by-election for what it is. It's a, the most important and significant opportunity that the people of Scarborough Rouge River have had in 20 years. We have a vacant seat now, and it's time to make an important decision who you best believe is going to work with the community and is going to challenge the government and is going to stand up for Scarborough. 
So I think that's me. Uh, we we'll give you one minute advertisement, like commercial, so to appeal to the to the voters. Well, just to let you know that my father was the first visible minority in Canada ever to seek political office, and he did that for the NDP with the great Canadian Tommy Douglas as his guest speaker. My father opened the door for many other minorities to seek their dreams and to seek political opportunities, such as Alvin Curling, who was elected here for 20 years. And now it's time for us to stand up for Scarborough. It's time for us to choose the representative who's going to carry the message to Dalton McGuinty that we deserve more, we deserve better, we're tired of being neglected, and we have confidence in the NDP voice in the Ontario legislature to fight for what's best for the people of Scarborough. Okay, last, and can you say a, a few greetings to our audience? Uh, ni hao, uh, le hao ma. Uh, I hope to improve my languages as I become uh, more integral with your community working as your MPP. Thank you, Sita.